Good morning, everybody. What a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We are so excited to be here this morning. If you are visiting or watching online, thank you for choosing Living Word this morning. It's going to be a great day. I know we've had a week full of some crazy weather, but you know what? There's peace right here in this building. There is peace in the midst of the storm. Amen. It's so good to see all the smiling faces. Why is everybody wearing green? I don't understand. I don't get it. Oh, I really don't get it, do I? I forgot. But that's okay. We're still going to have a great time. Brother Bill, you want to come over here? It's so good to see you. Good to see you, too. How are you doing? Good. Wonderful. God, lead us in a word of prayer. Thank you, of course. Get fired up. Yes, good to see church family and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What a privilege to praise the Lord. We give God all the glory and honor because He is worthy. And praise and worship is what it gets us through so much. And I can even share my own testimony that every time things sort of kind of corner me, praise and worship is what gets me. It's what gets me through. And it's interesting because we give God all the glory, but ultimately we get the benefit of that. What kind of deal is this? I mean, this is a wonderful deal. And I encourage you, church, if you're going through any struggle, let praise and worship define our relationship with God. Every time, everywhere you go, praise and worship Him because He's worthy and He will get us through. And I pray this morning that our hearts are filled with praise and worship that belong, that, be, that becomes our lifestyle with, with a walk with God. And I pray also that we're going to place God where He belongs to in the highest possible way. God will give us everything. The only thing He was not going to do is not going to give us is his glory. Glory belongs to him. And our job here is to declare the kingdom of God by praising and worshiping the Lord because he is worthy and there's no one that can match him. Let's come before the Lord today. Father God, thank you for your presence this morning in this house. Thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving us Jesus. Thank you for giving us Jesus who, who died on a cross for every single one of us so we may have a relationship with the Father. What a privilege to be called children of God. I pray, Father, in this morning, in the name of Jesus, that you fill your church up with your Holy Spirit. I pray every ounce, every inch of our lives, I pray, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Worship to you, God. I pray that everything we do will submit it to you, to your glory and honor. I pray, do not take away, Father, the glory that belong to you. I pray, fill our hearts with praise and worship, and let it become a life of each one of us. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, let this service be trained by the word of God. I pray every life will be touched and transformed by your Holy Spirit this morning. Thank you, God, for every single one of us here. Prepare our hearts for praise and worship. They got a church, but everywhere we go, I pray, we will declare the kingdom of God everywhere we go and declare, God, that you save, you save each one of us. I pray, God, bless us. Keep us all safe and protected. I pray, take away, Father, all distraction. Everything that doesn't belong in our house of God, I pray, take away in the name of Jesus. Face with your warm presence. They're so unmistakable. Give us a fire to worship you everywhere we go. I pray, Father, for the praise and worship this morning to be glorifying and honoring to you. Father, forgive us the privilege to praise and worship you. I pray for the word of God to be preached through our pastor this morning. I pray, open up our hearts, Father. Let us feel your presence in an unmistakable way. Thank you already for the victory that you already placed in every single one of these individuals in this room here, Father. Everybody watching online, I thank you in advance for your promise that you have, every single one of them. You love making promises, and more importantly, you love fulfilling them. I pray, Father. I pray that everybody will feel your presence in a mighty way this morning. Thank you in advance for you are worthy to receive all the praise and worship. In your wonderful, mighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Stand as you are able this morning, and we're going to start worship. And this first song, Love Lifted Me. 
I just want to let you all know, I was talking to a friend of mine, going through a lot of problems, and so this week we were kind of talking, and he's pretty depressed, and he felt that he wasn't being loved, and he was just in that place, and it got me thinking that, you know, people really need to be loved. And they need to know that people know who they are. And you know, I remember I told him that Jesus knows your name. And he loves you. And you know, I don't know how this is going to work out. But you know, I know we all know people that have that going on in their life. And so this morning, I just want you to remember, love lifts us. And as this song starts, I was thinking it just reminded me so much of him this week. So I just asked this morning, we're going to sing it loud because I want him to watch this service today. So I'm going to tell him to watch it. So we're going to start right now. He knows who it is. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, and very deeply stained within and sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me, now saying, Am I? The love lifted me, oh, love lifted me. But when nothing else could help, love lifted me, oh, love lifted me. A love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love Cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. A love so mighty and so true merits his soul's best song. A faithful, loving service to, to him belong. Love lifted me, oh love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, oh love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. With souls in danger, look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, bears the soul to obey. He's your savior, wants to be, be saved today. Come on, love lifted me. Love lifted me, but when nothing else could help, love lifted me, oh, love lifted me, and love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Amen. That's calisthenics right there. I saw all y'all doing that. That is great. Man, I should have stretched out. Man, you got going into that. I should have warned y'all. I didn't know y'all were going to do it. Okay, here we go. You ready? Oh, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, when the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair, when the saved on earth shall gather over on the other shore, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And when the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. And when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise. And the glory of his resurrection share. When the chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And when the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And let us labor for the master from the dawn's to setting sun. Let us talk about his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And when the roll is 
down this is going to be special the young adults i keep calling them youth but they're not youth especially with me up here they're definitely probably children compared to me but they're going to bless us this morning but they want you to stand they want you to sing and they want you to clap is that all of it yeah and one of y'all got to run around a little bit but she'll <laughs> renee uh, renee it'll be you i'm just telling you so really enjoy this of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our God is great our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? stand against our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healer awesome in power our God our God our God is greater our God is stronger Awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, praise and worship team of all ages. Amen. Is this a hint for me to sing this morning? Y'all, is this what y'all want? Y'all want me to sing? You mean sing the sermon? Is that, is that what you want? I'll put that right there. <laughs> all right. Hey, good to see you this morning. We want to go ahead and dismiss our little ones to Children's Church. We've got the Perrys, now the Perrys are professional singers as well. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the Perrys. And then uh, I believe we got nursery as well. Yeah, yep, Kim, Kim Bronner's got nursery. So awesome, awesome, good to see you. Now, you're going to hear me say this for the next couple of weeks, okay? Now, today's not going to be as bad, but next week you're probably going to hear the words, kind of squeeze into the middle. I know everybody likes to sit on the outside edges, but kind of squeeze into the middle because we may be having some guests for the first time that are going to be visiting next week is Passover, uh, not Passover, what is next week? Palm Sunday. We've got the Lord's Supper next Sunday. We've got uh, 
also a uh, baby dedication next week, so it's going to be a powerful Sunday. And then the following Sunday is Easter, so uh, we want to make sure that we give our guests plenty of room and uh, let them feel welcome as, as they come in. So are you glad to be here today? I'm glad to see you this morning. I'm so glad to see you. Um, if this is your first time with us, we would love to have a record of your attendance. You'll see in the pew in front of you, there are some cards. Also on the back of that is a place for a prayer request. If the, at the end of the service you want to bring those cards up front, we'll be happy to pray over uh, that request. We'll have our pray, pray, prayer team. I can't even speak. This is going to be a bad Sunday. Prayer team is going to be up here. So we'll be glad to pray with you. And then also, if you want to be part of our email and text uh, system, you can uh, text LWB guest to 84576. If some of you are wondering, what does that mean? You take out your phone and you go to text messages and you just type in 84576 and you just text the word LWB guest. Real simple. And that just signs you up. So real simple. And that, that'll get you uh, into our emails and text messages that go out. So we want to keep everyone involved. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And let's get started in our message this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to come to this place of worship, this place of prayer, this place of fellowship. And Father, we just thank you uh, for in advance of what is going to happen uh, today. We, we have already been praising your name, worshiping you. And Father, you are worthy of our praise. And we thank you for that. Thank you for sending us your son, Jesus Christ. So Father, in these next few minutes... Today we need the help of the Holy Spirit to teach us, to instruct us through your word. So Father, use your word. Use the words that are going to come out of my mouth today. Lord, you know my thoughts, you know the meditation of my heart, and Lord, I just want to make sure it is simple, it's clear, and it's all about you. So Father, help us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, you may not have it available, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, buckle up. Just go ahead and buckle up, because we're we're about to take off, and I got a. I, 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 I'm telling you, I told Tim this morning, I've got about a three-hour message that I want to share with you, and I don't know how to put this down into two hours, but we're going to try our best to, <laughs> to make sure that that we get it get the job done. Okay, powerful, powerful message, uh, Matthew chapter 27. I hope you brought your Bible today because you're going to need it. Uh, I've got uh, some of the scripture up here on the screen for you, uh, but we're going to be using our Bibles this morning because I really want to show you the power of God. I want to show you uh, what God is up to, and we're going to be taking a trip. We're going to take a trip probably about four or 5,000 years in the history, so there's a lot of scripture that I want to throw at you. I'm going to have it on the screen. Um, something that I do regularly, if, uh, if I'm taking notes or cannot keep up, I'll just take out my phone and take a picture of the screen, and that way I can go back and, and I can reference some of that scripture, just kind of a heads up, because I'm telling you, we're, we're gonna, I'm going to have to fly really, really fast, and, and I need you to listen quickly today. I really need your participation in listening, because it's going to help me, okay? Matthew chapter 27, um, we're, we're going to see verses 15 through 26. If you haven't been with us, I'm going to go ahead and give you some context. We're on the journey to the cross. We started in John chapter 12. We saw the anointing of Jesus as Mary uh, broke open the box of ointment and poured it over uh, Jesus' feet, washed his feet, rubbed her hair with his feet. And then last week we talked about Judas um, bringing everything into full circle. We know that Peter has denied Jesus. Up to this point of Matthew chapter 27, Peter has already denied Jesus. In fact, you look back a couple of verses, the, the rooster has already crowed. So it's a it's Good Friday. It, it, it is a new day. Uh, Judas has already hung himself. A lot of things have taken place when we now read Matthew chapter 27, verses 15 through 26. It says, now at the feast, all right, this is the feast of the Passover. This is the the celebration of the Jews coming together this one time of year, coming into Jerusalem, coming into the temple. A lot of things have happened through the night with Jesus. Jesus did not get any sleep all through Thursday night. Now it's early Friday morning. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing 
to the crowd or to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner, and his name was Barabbas. Let me park right here for just a second because some of your Bibles don't say this. If you've got the New International Version, it's going to say Jesus Barabbas. Does anybody have that version that it says Jesus Barabbas? we got one in the room, okay? Um, Jesus is a sacred name. And over the years, as they're translating different translations of the Bible, they took Jesus out to try to make Jesus, Christ, not look like a bad person. Okay, They, they, they didn't want to compare Barabbas to Jesus Christ, but actually... In the Greek New Testament, Jesus Barabbas is his name, okay? Now, Jesus, we're familiar with that name. Barabbas, we break that down, Bar, Abba. Bar means son of, Abba means father, okay? So we've got Jesus, son of father. Keep that in mind as we go through this. Verse 17, therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release to you? And I'm, I'm going to throw in Jesus. Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? You, you get what's happening here. You've got two men standing before the people. You've got Jesus Barabbas, son of the Father, and then you've got Jesus who is also called the Messiah, son of God. Does that make sense? You've got Son of the Father, and then you've got Son of God. You've got two Jesuses standing side by side. Pilate says, who do you want me to release? For he knew that they handed him over because of envy. The Jews, the Jewish leaders handed Jesus Christ over. He did not do anything wrong. They handed him over and said, please put him to death. Verse 19, while he was sitting, this is Pilate, while he was sitting, on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him, by the way, men, always listen to your wife, have nothing to do with that just man. For I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. Pilate's wife had a dream, had a vision. It disturbed her. And she is telling Pilate, do not have anything to do with this just man. Don't go through with it, okay? Wise, wise woman. Verse 20. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. You see, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Jewish leaders were going amongst the crowd. And there's thousands of people gathered together in the city. And they're going person by person saying, when it comes time... You say, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, destroy him. Just keep that in mind. That's what they're doing. They're working the crowd. Verse 21, the governor answered and said to them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas, release to us Barabbas. Now, any average reader be like, what's the big deal? Pilate said to them, what then shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? And they said to him, let him be crucified. Well, that's stern. The power was in the hands of the people. Let him be crucified. Verse 23, then the governor said, why? What evil has he done? Pilate has found no guilt in Jesus, has found no Nothing. He's found him to be an innocent man. Pilate was hoping that the people would say, let Barabbas hang. Let him go to the cross. Let him be crucified. Pilate did not. Listen, Pilate was a people-pleasing politician. Let me say that again. Pilate was a people-pleasing politician. We see a lot of those today. And here we see he handed him over to the people and they cried out, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult or a disruption was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude. And by the way, washing your hands 
is not going to free you of your sin. Just washing your hands. I'm going to go a step further. Just getting baptized alone is not going to get you to heaven. Water by itself will do nothing. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that forgives us of our sins. He washed his hands before the multitude saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. And you see to it. Pilate didn't want anything to do with this. He says, I'm washing my hands of it. You do what you need to do. Verse 25, and all the people answered and said, His blood be on us and on our children. And by the way, at the beginning of this week, as Scripture, not the beginning of this week, but the week that we're talking about, Passion Week, uh, Palm Sunday, as Jesus was entering into Jerusalem, all the multitude of people were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. And now by the end of the week, they're crying out, crucify him, crucify him. You see how people are so unique. They can change their mind real quick, especially if they're persuaded. Okay, verse 26. Then he released Barabbas. Now what does Barabbas' name mean? Son of a father to them. And when he had scourged Jesus... Now, if Pilate found Jesus to be innocent, why in the world is now, why is he scourging him? Why is he beating him? Why is he mistreating him? But he delivered him to be crucified. Let's go back to verse 22. And I highlighted it right here for you. This is a question that every person in this room and watching online is going to have to answer before you leave today. What then shall I do with Jesus who is called the Christ? What shall we do with Jesus? All right? Now, this is what I want to do with you. I want to share a message with you, the goat. All right? My intentions are to always try to make Scripture stick. Now, the goat, the greatest of all time. I, I know right then you've got some names that are probably coming into your mind. I'm going to share a couple of these with you. By the way, they're not mine. I took these off the Internet. Number one, everybody knows Michael Jordan, right? He's the greatest basketball player that's ever lived. Not a single amen. I mean, I mean, he, he's, I, I grew up watching Michael Jordan, all right? I had Michael Jordan tennis shoes. Did anybody else have Michael Jordan tennis shoes? Really? Okay. So Michael Jordan is considered one of the greatest basketball players of all time. What about Joe Montana? Talking about football, one of the great everybody shaking their head, huh? One of the he goes down in history as one of the greatest football players, quarterbacks of all time. Okay? Now, what about Babe Ruth? I mean, Babe Ruth, he's the goat of baseball, right? I mean, he is one of the greatest that go down in history of being a great baseball player. He's the GOAT, greatest of all time. All right, Serena Williams, for any of you that play tennis. One of the greatest. She started in 1995, young. And she has become one of the greatest tennis players ever known to man. She's won a lot of championships, okay? Now, for some of you boxing fans, Muhammad Ali. No? Just because the name or what? I mean, Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest boxers, all right? Now, I know. Are there any wrestling fans in the house? Anybody know who Ric Flair is? Come on, Ric Flair. My dad didn't let me watch wrestling because he said it was fake. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't keep up with that. But I'm going to tell you who is the greatest of all time. Y'all say it with me. Jesus Christ. He is the greatest of all time. Goes down in the record. Yeah, give him a hand. Give him a hand. Has nothing compared to Michael Jordan, right? I mean, Michael Jordan is nothing compared to Jesus. Muhammad Ali, nothing compared to Jesus. Jesus is the goat. He's the greatest of all time. I mean, he, there, there's been more history books written about Jesus. There's been more discussions about Jesus than any other man. And he is the greatest. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings. He's brought back Lazarus from the dead. He's, he's allowed the deaf to hear. He's allowed to, the lame to walk. He's allowed the blind to see. Who else is there like Jesus Christ? He is the greatest of all time. Now, let's, let's dig in some scripture because 
I want you to see through this passage, Matthew chapter 27, a great, great story, but also a great lesson, okay? Now, we've got to go back to Genesis chapter 22, and maybe you're familiar with, with chapter 22 of Genesis when Abraham was instructed by God to take his only son, Isaac, and go up on top of a mountain that he was going to be shown and offer him up as a sacrifice. Okay, I want to pick up in verse 1, chapter 22. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And then he said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will show you or tell you. Okay, Abraham was given the title, the father of many, but he only had one son. And here, God was testing his faith, telling him, take your only son and go up on top of the mountain and offer him as a sacrifice. And then we pick up in verse 3. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young with him, and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. And then on the third day, say the third day. You see, God has meaning all throughout Scripture. And we know that in two weeks from today, we're going to be celebrating that third day. That Jesus arose from the grave. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to the young men, he said, Stay here with the donkey and the lad, and I will go yonder and worship. And watch this. We will come back to you. You see, I don't know what Abraham was thinking. He heard what God had told him, but he also told the servants that were left behind, we will come back. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, and took the fire in his hand and the knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to his father and said, My father. He said, Here I am, son. He said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Now we know how this story turns out. And uh, verse 8, Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. Of course, we know the end of this story. He has Isaac laid on the, the altar table there. And, and Abraham pulls up the knife. And he's about to go forth with killing his only begotten son. Now, Abraham had two choices, obey God or not obey God. And he says, I'm going to choose to obey God because I know that God will provide. Amen? God will provide, and I want you to see this, because this is going to make Matthew chapter 27 come to life, because we need to know, even in our life today, God will provide. He will provide a way. He will provide a way, and, and that is so important. When you don't know what else to do, all you need to do is trust God, and that's where Abraham's faith come in. I am going to have faith in God and he will provide. And of course, we know that as soon as he lifted up that knife to strike his son Isaac, uh, an angel, capital A, if you've got the authorized version of God's word, a capital A, Jesus Christ incarnate, stopped him. And all of a sudden, there was a ram over in the thicket. And they took that lamb and put him on the table and sacrificed and worshiped God. Amen? God will provide. Let me ask you something. Has there ever been a time that you thought God would not provide? I'm going to say that's a lack of faith. Because we're told through scripture after scripture after scripture, God will provide. Alright, let's go to the next one. Leviticus chapter 16. Are y'all familiar uh, with the book of Leviticus? Third book of the Old Testament. Do y'all like the Old Testament? Say yes. It's God's word. Some people say, oh, I don't like the Old Testament. Well, you're not going to heaven. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sometimes we say, well, I have a hard time. I have a difficult time understanding the Old Testament. Well, let, let, let me tell you something. The Old Testament 
brings Jesus to life in the New Testament. Everything written in the Old Testament, as we just saw in Genesis chapter 22, is highlighting what God's going to do in the life of Jesus, that he will provide a way. Then we come to Leviticus chapter 16. And in Leviticus chapter 16, we see that this is what we call the Day of Atonement. Then, uh, now the Lord spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered profane fire before the Lord and died. And the Praise God that we have God's grace in the New Testament, okay? Because th there are some thoughts, if, if we lived during the Old Testament times, the Old Covenant, there are some thoughts and actions that we probably do on a regular basis that would kill us if we were to walk in God's house and come before His altar with those thoughts and those actions, okay? God takes sin very serious. Don't ever forget that. And then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, your brother, not to come at just any time into the holy place inside the well, or inside the veil, before the mercy seat which is on the ark, lest he die. For I will appear in the cloud above the mercy seat. Now, I want you to understand God will provide, and God has provisions, okay? He has a way that he will provide. Now watch this. Verse, uh, where are we at? Verse 3. And then, uh, thus Aaron shall come into the holy place with the blood of a young bull as a sin offering and of a ram as a burnt offering. He shall put the holy linen tunic and the linen trousers on his body. Even Aaron, when he comes in, he's going to have to wash He's going to have to cleanse physically, spiritually. He's going to put on clean, white clean, uh, clothes. And, and he's going to walk into the most holy of holies. Okay, Now he's going to bring a, a ram as a burnt offering. And, he, and then he's going to put on these clothes. And then we see that these are holy garments. Therefore, he shall wash the body in water and put them on. And he shall take from the congregation of the children of Israel... Two kids of the goats as a sin offering and one ram a burnt offering. Okay, now stick with me. The instruction to Aaron was go before the congregation and get two goats. And get your bull and we're going to have a worship service here. Now this is what we call the day of atonement. This is the one day that set the, the scene for the priest to go into the most holy of holies and to offer up a sacrifice for the sins of God's people, okay? When Jesus died on the cross, we no longer have to bring in any goats, all right? Aren't you glad we don't have to bring Michael Jordan in, right? I don't think Michael Jordan could be that sacrifice. He's not the greatest of all time, but there is one, Jesus Christ. That's why he is the goat. He's the greatest of all time, all right? Verse 7, verse 6. Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself, for his house. First, for, for Aaron to be able to offer up the sins of the nation, first, he's going to have to offer up an offering for himself. He's going to have to become pure. He's going to have to make things right with God. Then he can offer up the sins of the nation. Verse 7, he shall take the two goats, say two goats. He shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord, at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Then Aaron shall cast lots uh, over for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. You ever heard that word before, scapegoat? Guess where it came from? Right here. God gave it to us, the scapegoat. Le Leviticus chapter 16, um, verse 10. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat, shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement upon it and to let it go as the scapegoat into the wilderness. Now let's just park right there for just a minute and let's, let's kind of bring all this full circle. Now in Genesis chapter 22, we see that God is going to provide. In, in, in Leviticus chapter 16, now we understand that God has a way 
that he's going to provide. Amen? God always has a way. Y'all aren't getting this. God is not surprised by anything. God's not surprised by Satan. God's not surprised by any evil act that is ever happening in the world. God is not surprised by anything. God knows what's going to happen in the future. God knows what's going to happen in the next few minutes. God knows what's going to happen in the next 10 years. God knows what's going to happen in the next 1,000 years. So who do you want to trust? Let's, let's trust Jesus Christ. He is our Lord and our Savior. So let's, let's bring this full circle. Let's, let's, go, let's go back to Matthew chapter uh, uh, 27. Now, I want to show you God's plan. Now, God will provide. God has provisions. But then God's also got a plan. All right? Now, and, uh, th this is real. I really want you to pay close attention. Four times in the New Testament, the name Barabbas is mentioned. This name Barabbas is mentioned in Matthew chapter 27, as we just read. His name means son of father. Okay? Now, Mark goes into a little bit more in depth about the life of Barabbas, says that he is a thief, he's a robber, and he's a murderer. Luke even says the same thing. He says, he, this guy is a bad, he's a bad person. He, he, he is convicted of a crime in which he is supposed to die for. In fact, history says that when a person has gone through the courts, as they ought to have, he'll go through the courts, he'll get his sentence, and the sentence has fallen on Jesus Barabbas, you are to be crucified. He's an insurrectionist. He's what we call today a terrorist. He is somebody that needs to go and die for what he has done. Now, he's also a Jew. He's somebody that has been part of the Jewish leadership, maybe. And he has led a revolt against the Roman government. So don't you think that Pilate was saying, we got our man right here. Obviously, the people are going to pick Barabbas over the Christ because Barabbas deserves to die. He's done some bad things. John doesn't say very much in two verses, but only says that he was offered up to the people. And the people said, let us have Barabbas. Okay, let's go back to Matthew chapter 27 now. Y'all with me? Is it starting to make sense? It's going to make more sense here in just a minute. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the multitude a scapegoat. That makes sense now. All right, but this is not a Jewish custom. This was something that Pilate, being a people-pleasing politician, he says, I want to make the people happy. So on the Day of Atonement every year, I'm going to come before the people, and the people are going to have a choice in the matter of who do you want to set free. And the Jews, knowing that this day was coming, the Jews knowing that if they could get the people to say, crucify Jesus, destroy Jesus, they got their way. All right? But listen, God has a plan. Don't, don't think that God didn't know what was going to happen. Don't think that God was not already using Pilate. Don't think that God was already using Pilate's wife. Don't think that God wasn't using Judas to betray him. Listen, Jesus had to go to the cross. It all had to happen. God's going to provide. God has his provisions. But listen, God has a plan. All right? Let's keep going. Verse 16. And at that time, they had a notorious, Matthew says he was a notorious prisoner, and his name was Jesus Barabbas. Jesus, the son of a father. Now, l l let me just kind of do your thinking for you. We got two goats. We got Jesus Barabbas and we got Jesus Christ. We got two goats. We got two people that are standing before the people. And by the way, over in Leviticus, uh, the, the goats had to be identical. They had to look the same, okay? Now, I'm not saying that Jesus Barabbas and Jesus Christ had to look the same here, but they had the same name. They were presented to the people. Now, a scapegoat is going to go away. Of course, we know. It's Barabbas. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release to you? Barabbas, the son of a father, or Jesus, the son of God? And of course, we see that they said, We want 
Barabbas, for they knew, the, the Jews knew, that they had handed him over because of en envy. While he was sitting, Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him saying, I'm telling you, have nothing to do with this man. He's a righteous, just man. All right? Now, who is Pilate? He's a people-pleasing politician. Y'all say that. Y'all can't say it. Y'all can't even say it. You, you see them every day on TV, but you can't. They're people-pleasing politicians. I, I want to make the people happy. I don't care what happens to me. I need to look good, and I want the people to be happy. That's all Pilate was interested in, all right? He, he was a cruel, cruel person. He, he, did, not, he did not serve God. He did, he, in fact, when uh, he was questioning Jesus the night that, that he was to be arrested, he says, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus says, you said it yourself. You said it. In other words, those words that, that Potty is saying, he would not ever confess it, but Jesus says, ah, oh, you did say it. He didn't want to say it, but he did. Okay? Verse 20. But the chief priests and the elders, they're, they're persuading the multitude. You know how to persuade people, don't you? I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. Always some money involved. There'll be something in it for you. All right? So the Jews that they were doing knew exactly. Tell the people scream for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. And the governor said, which of the two do you want me to release to you? We got two goats. One has to die, and the other one's going to be set free. Okay? Now this is all going to make sense here in just a minute. And they said, we want Barabbas. Set Barabbas as the scapegoat. Now, some of you are scholarly in the word. And some of you are probably thinking right now, but isn't Jesus the scapegoat? Because over in, and, and we didn't read it, Leviticus chapter 16, Aaron would take one goat, they'd cast the lots, and the one that was to be offered up to the Lord for the sins of the people would die. The other goat would be set free. But before that goat would be set free, Aaron would lay his hands and confess the sins onto that goat. And then sometimes he would even walk that goat amongst the people so that the people would realize their sins are on that goat now and then that goat would be set out into the wilderness. That goat would be set free. That goat would never have to come back. That goat would never come back to be convicted of any other sin. It took its sins and went out into the wilderness, okay? Matthew chapter 27, verse 22, the most important question right here. What then shall I do with Jesus who was called Christ? And I want to ask you that question right now. What are you going to do with Jesus Christ? Because you have to make a choice. You either have to declare him as your Lord and Savior, or you're going to have to say he's a liar and a lunatic. You're not going to ride the fence. You're going to have to choose. Either he is going to be my Savior or I'm going to reject him. And it's your choice. What are you going to do with Jesus? And they said, let him die. They rejected Jesus Christ. And of course, Pilate had to wash his hands. And then he says the blood, or the people said the blood is on us and our children. Shortly after this, there was more destruction that happened to God's people than ever before because of what they did with the Messiah, okay? Let's, let's, let's fast forward because I, I, I want to make sense of all this. Romans chapter 5, verse 6, Paul says, For when we were still without strength, when we were weak and, and we didn't know, in due time Christ died for who? Listen, you don't have to wait to make things right with God, then to say, I'm going to get saved. How many people you hear that say, well, you know, when I, when I get things right, then I'm going to get saved. No, no, that, that's not how it works. You, you've got to have a cleansing from inside before it can come out on the outside, okay? Now, verse 8, we skip verse 7, but verse 8, but God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
Don't wait till you say, I, I'm no longer a sinner. I've made things right with God. You cannot make things right with God until you have confessed Him as your Lord and Savior. Amen? And that's what we're going to do with Christ. That's what we're going to do with Him. We're going to accept Him as our Lord and Savior, and then we're going to allow Him to change us. He's going to change our hearts. He's going to change our mind. He's going to give us what the big word, salvation. Salvation doesn't mean just eternal life. It means transformation. Salvation means that there is a process of a change that is happening. Now, I'm, I'm going to just get real real with you right now. If, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and there has not been a change, there has not been a transformation in your life, you're not saved. You're not saved because Jesus Christ comes to save and to change mankind. He presents us to God the Father as spotless. Now, yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You can't wait until you make things right and then get saved. You've you got you to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Then He will make a way. He will provide a way for you to change. Let me ask you two questions. Are you Barabbas? Are you a child of the Father? What are you going to do with Jesus Christ? You see, there was two men, two goats. One took the sins of the world and hung on a cross. The other was a thief, a robber, and a murderer. And he was set free. There was a cross prepared for Barabbas. There was a cross that had his name on it. There was a cross that was already prepared. And Barabbas knew at 3 o'clock I'm going to that cross. But the end walked Jesus Christ. In walks the Savior of the world. Barabbas probably never heard about Jesus. We, we don't even know what, what happened to Barabbas after this story. But what we do know is when the people started saying, Crucify the Christ! Crucify the Christ! Barabbas looked around and like, Are you kidding me? Really? I'm going to be set free. I deserve to die. Folks, we're all a Barabbas. We deserve to die. But we've been set free. We've been released. We've been released as the scapegoat. Now, I said some of you are really studied up over in Leviticus chapter 16, and I'm glad for that because Jesus is also the scapegoat. Jesus not only is the one that died on the cross, but he's also the one to take all the sins of the world. He's the one that's going to take all the sins of the world. But yeah, Barabbas was set free. He was set free to go and to never be tried again. Could you imagine the mindset of Barabbas? Man, he was already in his mind thinking, what's going to happen when I die? What's going to happen when I take my last breath? When I finally suffocate on the cross, what's going to happen to me? Am I going to go to hell? Am, what am I going to see? What's going to happen to me? And then in that moment when the people shouted, give us Barabbas, he looked around and said, are you kidding me? You're going to let me go free? Folks, that's what Jesus did for us. He let you and I go free. He let us. He released us. No longer are we bound by any sin. We, no longer are we held captive. Okay, so that leads me to the next question. Well, let me read this to you real quick. 1 John 3, 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. We're, we are Barabbas. We are a child of the Father. We belong to God. We are His children if you've confessed Him as Lord and Savior. All right? Now, have you been set free? I'm going to park here for just a minute. Because when Barabbas was set free, he was set free. Do you get that? No longer was he found guilty. No longer could he be charged of any other crime. He's been set free. I'm going to park here for just a second. Because there's a lot of people that have trusted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And they have not been released in their mind. 
still holding on to that past sin, still holding on to those past events that happened. Listen to me. If you are a child of God, you have been set free. You, you, come on, say amen. You've been set free. You are Barabbas. You're not going to die for your sins. You, you're not going to be held condemned for your sins. Jesus is not going to look at you and say, me and you got to talk. Me and you got to make, we got to do some business. You, you've heard that before. We, we're we're going to have a Jesus talk. Jesus don't have talks like this. His talk was on the cross. Amen. His talk was already setting you free and free indeed. Look, look at what Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 36. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Say, I'm free. I'm free. You, you are a free person. No longer are you held captive. No longer can Satan have anything to do with you. And you say, then why do I have all these problems? I, maybe you're not reading your Bible. Maybe you're not supporting your local church. I, may, maybe you're not in fellowship with God. M maybe, maybe there's some things that in your mind you haven't been set free of. But listen, if Jesus died on the cross for all sin, he set you free. And we need to know that. We need to know I have been set free. I am Barabbas. I deserve to die. But thank Jesus, he stood in my place. And when Jesus went to that cross, he died for you and me. He died for my sins. Now that was 2000, over 2,000 years ago. And he has still died for my sins. I've been set free. Has anybody else been set free? Two of you, three of you? Because <laughs> he, he, here's the thing. I, I like it when, I, when, when I'm free. I, 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 like, I like it when I'm free. I, I'm going to say this. I like it when I have a day off. And nobody tells me what to do. Except my wife. <laughs> and, and I like it when there's peace in the house. There's no fighting, no arguing. There, there, there's there's just, just calm and peace. Anybody else like that? Y'all yeah, don't have teenagers, but just raise your hand. So when, when those days happen, we call those special days. We call those days that, man, isn't this good, okay? When you are in Christ, that's every day. Because the Bible says that our, if you are not in Christ, you are at war with God. And I can promise you who's going to win. Because if, if God has all power to speak and it happens, we don't stand a chance. So I, I'm just going to go ahead at eight years old and just go ahead and make my mind up that I've heard enough about Jesus Christ that he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings and I just need to surrender to him and make him my master. So at eight years old, I said, I don't know what I need to do, but I know I need to serve him. I don't know what else needs to take place in my life, but I'm going to follow him. And at that point, I set a direction to say, God's going to provide. God's going to make a way. Now, has there been problems in my life? Absolutely. Just Thursday night, we had a storm. Everybody has problems. But listen, God has a plan. God has a provision. God has always had a way to make things work. But here's where it comes back to. If we are going to be set free, we're going to have to trust in who set us free. And we're going to have to know, Lord, if you've set me free... I'm just going to go ahead and trust you. You've set me free. I'm just going to go ahead and just act like I'm a free person. Now, I'm going to be obedient. I'm not going to be a lawbreaker. I'm not going to be like Barabbas and, and try to cause a terrorist threat. But I am going to say, if my master loves me so much that he died on the cross for me because I was a sinner and I deserve to die, but he was not a sinner and he died, then I'm going to do whatever makes him happy. I'm going to keep his commandments. I'm going to love him till the day that I die. I'm going to follow him because he's going to give me 
eternal life. He's going to set me free. Amen? Amen. Are you Barabbas? Have you been set free? Did Jesus die for you? Did Jesus set you free? I think there's a lot of victory in, in those few statements right there. And I think there's some celebration that needs to happen right there. Now hold your celebration. Because I know y'all are not typical Baptists. But come Easter, come Easter, it's not a funeral service. It is a life celebration service. Because on that third day, Jesus arose from the grave. I tell you what, there's no other person I'd rather follow than Jesus Christ. He's the goat. He's the greatest of all time. Amen? Amen. I hope you never forget this passage of scripture. Jesus is the goat. And he's also the scapegoat. He took our sins. And never are we to bear those sins again. Amen? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. You are the greatest of all time. And Lord, you continue to be the greatest for us. Lord, I just pray in these next few minutes, if someone needs to surrender their life to you, to be set free of everything. Oh Lord, I pray that they just pray that simple prayer. Lord, I confess, I repent. Come into my heart and save me. Help me. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to pray.